if you ask people these days if they've ever dated a narcissist, the chances are a lot of people are going to say, yeah, my ex was a narcissist. But actually, we need to really stop calling people narcissists because a better way of looking at it is unless your ex was like or something, you are better off saying my ex was emotionally immature, very self-centered and failed to see things from my perspective. Because actually therapy speak has kind of crept into everyday language, particularly because of social media. And people are now labeling people when people don't need to be labeled. And it then makes us look at the whole relationship in a different way, because there's two sides to any relationship. And yes, you might've entered a relationship with someone who didn't treat you very well, but you have a part to play in relation to looking at why you entered into that relationship and why you stayed there. And we could look at it from a different perspective. For instance, again, kind of therapy speak, but we could say my ex used a lot of ego defenses and uh, they tried very hard to protect their ego and that caused problematic behavior where we were incredibly disconnected. But then also, if you're gonna talk about their ego defenses, it would be good if you also look at your ego defenses. Because if you're in a relationship with someone who has high traits of narcissism, or if we're not going to use so much therapy speak, let's just say it was very self-centered and immature. So they were using their ego defenses, which meant that they were unreasonable at times. They gaslighted you at times. They didn't show empathy, didn't treat you well, wasn't faithful, you know, all of the other bad behavior. But then what were your ego defenses? And actually for some people, you know, cause it's gonna be different for everyone, but for some people it might be, well, actually the way that they were trying to protect their ego was to prove to them that they could keep that partner, could keep an unavailable partner. And actually there's like a, an ego boosting thing that was going on by trying to chase this unavailable partner. If I win this person over, I am good enough. If I get this person who's really hard to get to stay in the relationship and fully commit, then I am worthy. And you know, there, that can be an ego defense. So proving to your own ego that actually you can get this person who you clearly are picking up on them as being unavailable. There might be other ways that you try to protect your ego and it led to you staying in an unhealthy relationship. Perhaps you were trying to prove to your friends and family that you could make a relationship work. Or there might be other ways that you were trying to protect your ego that led you to stay in that relationship. So I think it's really important for us to start to look at these relationships in a very different way than we have been speaking about them. And, uh, you know, and that's not to say that we shouldn't recognize the pain of someone being in a, an abusive relationship because being in an abusive relationship is a tremendously traumatic experience and no one needs to blame themselves for being there or ending up there or staying there. But if you ever have been in that situation, you should recognize what got you there in the first place. Where was your self-esteem at the time that led you to enter into that relationship and stay in the relationship? What was your early life upbringing like to, uh, to lead you down that, that path? And there's going to be some clues there. And uh, of course, you can have a lot of compassion for the fact that you ended up in a situation where you were mistreated, but it's good for you to step back and take responsibility for trying to get yourself out of that situation, even though it can be tremendously hard. Of course, praising yourself when you get out and then reflecting on things afterwards and having a lot of compassion and a lot of sensitivity to the pain that you've experienced. You definitely don't want to be beating yourself up about that, but you want to also learn from the situation and learn about what you can do differently. Um, and this is why I like to speak about this overuse of the label of narcissist is that it's good to just reflect on our past relationships and think about, okay, who were we with and how do we have compassion for them? Because they've had trauma too. And some people really struggle with this. It can be very hard to have compassion for a partner who's been abusive towards you and you don't necessarily need to have compassion for them. Sometimes people have too much compassion and that's why they end up staying and that's why they end up not recognizing it as being an abusive relationship after they've left. Um, so there's a whole balance there, but um, it's really good to kind of see about people in that relationship and um, where were your strengths and where were you we your weaknesses, where, you where were your partner's strengths and where were your partner's weaknesses. And then also we could just get rid of therapy speak all together when looking at relationships and we could just try to see it for what it is. 
that you were in a dysfunctional relationship, although that could be still a therapy could speak kind of word. I'm kind of trying to step back and remove everything we know about psychology that's entered into our everyday language here. And I'm just trying to simplify things so that we can just start to rethink relationships and see them as just a lot more simple than all of this kind of jargon that's been placed on relationships these days. But um, but it's good to, to just recognize that actually there was reasons why your relationship worked and reasons why your relationship didn't work and that you had a part to play in that as well as your partner who you might have previously labeled as narcissistic. And the part that you played might have just been putting up with abusive behavior. Mm-hmm. You might have been in a very verbally abusive relationship, for instance, and not and you didn't leave. And that was a choice that you made. Perhaps you weren't strong enough to leave. And that's absolutely you know fine if that was your reality. But it's good to, when when reflecting on this situation to actually think, okay, your partner was immature, mistreated you as a result, your self-esteem was very low, so you couldn't leave as a result. And then you're looking at the dynamic and you're looking at the patterns from both of your sides rather than just labeling one person as this and another person as the other. Um, So I would encourage people to try and move away from therapy speak a little bit and stop overusing the word narcissist if you can and actually just use more acceptable ways of looking at situations so that you're not necessarily placing all the blame onto one party in the relationship. And it might be helpful because actually in this day and age, we're so quick to use these psychology terms and, you know, calling people narcissists when actually they don't meet the full diagnostic criteria of narcissistic personality disorder. It's not very helpful. And it's it's quite damaging for them to you know, hear that they're being called that if if they do hear that you're referring to them in that way, because mm-hmm. that's going to bring about an awful lot of shame. Mm-hmm. You know, they've been through a lot of trauma too. So they deserve the compassion of not being called a label uh, where they have not received a diagnosis. Because this is the thing, when people are calling their ex a narcissist, it's usually that they have diagnosed them as such, and it's not actually an official diagnostic label that they've received. Um, So I don't think it's respectful. And I think that there's ways that you can refer to the dynamic of the relationship and the dysfunction of the relationship without actually giving someone a diagnostic label that they haven't actually received. So I think I would like to encourage everyone to just move a little bit away from this overuse of therapy speak these days and sometimes try to look at things in a different perspective. If you've been in therapy for a long time, you might have gone into this kind of way of thinking about things. And I think that there's so much knowledge and information out there about diagnostic labels that we're very quick to try and understand people and analyze people in that way. And that's sometimes just not very helpful at all because actually the diagnostic system is not accurate. We know so little about people's brains and so little about people that, you know, give it 20 to 50 years and diagnosis as we see it now will completely have changed. And uh, diagnosis is only helpful if we're gonna give people treatment. So if you're gonna call your ex a narcissist and that's not to do with them getting really good quality treatment, then it's not a good idea to use that label and it's actually very unfair to them because it's an assumption that you're making when actually you can just say things like, I, did, I, I found that my ex wasn't very empathic towards me. You know, you can, you can kind of be a bit more factual with how you refer to your ex-partners or people you've dated. And it, it might just be fairer to people and, and it might just give you a slightly different perspective on how you see your past dating. And it might just be a bit more fair to people. It might also give you a different perspective on how you see your past relationships or dating situations. If you've liked this video, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments below.